Hi, I'm Shira Barton. And I'm Kevin Seidenstricker, and welcome to The Actor Whisperer, featuring John Pilata. Now he's got a different approach, and his approach goes not just nationwide, but worldwide. Indeed, he is a very busy man, and it is no surprise because he is the number one nationally actor rated on actorrated.com. If you want to be the best, you go to the best, and that is definitely John. Let's hear it for John Palata. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Let's uh, start with Paul H. Chapman. Paul H. Chapman. Hello, Paul. Hello, young man. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? What are you going to be doing? It's a monologue from a TV show, Dexter. I know Lawrence doesn't want anybody wearing these glasses. He said John don't wear them, but he's going to wear them, at least for the, for the scene. Put those on a second. You're playing a serial killer, right? Yes. A serial killer that kills serial killers. More right? or less, yes. Yeah. Do you know anything about serial killers? Yes, not firsthand. What do you know, what do you notice about serial killers, most recent ones in our time? And I've played a serial killer as well. What do you notice about them? They look like average They're people. Average, regular people. I want you to forget that there was ever a show called Dexter. It'd just be Paul. Because ideally, you're looking at the character and finding it within yourself where pieces of you fit in. And it is a mixture of you and that character. I don't fight him. I don't want to. He's all I've got. Nobody else could love me. Not even... Especially not me. Or... Uh, Maybe that's just what my dark passenger tells me. Because, you know, there are these moments that I feel connected to some things or some people. It's like my mask is just slipping Don't away. Be angry. Just focus on what I told you. Or perhaps that's just what my dark passenger tells me. Because lately, I get these moments where I just feel connected to some people or some things. And, uh, you know, it's like my mask is starting to fall away. And the people and things that didn't matter, they're suddenly seeming to matter. And that just scares the shit out of me. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. That was a lot better. My method is teaching you to become the character through the character because the character actor truly believes they are the character and you step into the character through the character. Okay, what are you doing here? I'll be performing Vesper from Casino Royale. Okay, all right, let's um, yeah. okay. take it there. All right, judging by the cut of your suit, I'd say you went to Oxford or wherever and naturally think human beings dress like that. But you wear it with such disdain. I like this poker thing. Okay, now that I'm makes. I'm gonna stop there. You're obviously okay. seducing someone. S sort kind of, of, yeah. Well, I, are you gonna kill him down the road or something? Well, no, he's he's you're seducing me. You're flying a boat and you, you get well, your jet skis, and at the end of the movie, that's what happened. Alice, I'm handing you a script for the very first time. I want to see your take on it. Um, let's bring up a man. Yeah, bring up this guy. Can I bring up your chair too? Okay. Can I bring her outside? Oh, uh, we don't have any cameras out there. It's okay. I'm going to say some stuff okay. that I really don't want people to hear. Okay, we'll go ahead okay. and tell Larry to pause. I'll go over here. <laughs> okay. You seduced him before. <laughs> okay, yes. Only because cinematically, you have to think what plays to the camera. All right, guys. <laughs> Lovely, hit it. Hit it? Hit it. <laughs> All right. Judging by the cut of your suit, I'd say you went to Oxford or wherever and naturally think human beings dress like that. But you, 
You wear it with such disdain. My guess is you didn't come from money, and your school friends never let you forget it. Now, since your first thought of me went straight to orphan, that's what I'd say you are. You are, huh? Let me stop you there. You're doing beautiful. Okay. You know how you make love <laughs> to someone to their mind? Make love to his mind. Okay. Fuck with his mind. Okay. <laughs> Girls are good at that. Ooh. Oh, I, just did it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're good at it. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> From the top. I don't know how much time is left. Okay. All right. And that makes perfect sense since MI6 looks for maladjusted young men who give little thought to sacrificing others for queen and country. You know, former SAS types who give l who, with easy smiles and expensive watches. Rolex. Oh, Omega. So, having just met you, I wouldn't go as far as calling you a cold-hearted bastard, but it wouldn't be so hard to imagine that you think of women as disposable pleasures rather than meaningful pursuits. So, I'm going to keep my eyes on our government's money and off your perfectly formed ass. <laughs> Even accountants have imagination. Good evening, Mr. Bond. <laughs> you right? Okay, Thank know, you. I'm at set where people simply don't know how to touch another actor. Come on set where this, I was coaching this woman who had to do a scene with a man, and she's like, but I, I don't want to be with a man. I'm like, <laughs> the make-believe is a girl! <laughs> it's whoever you create. Bringing strong change to the table. Bringing something that they're going to remember. All right. Um, Let's bring uh, Don Imus. Pleasure to have you. What are you going to be doing? I am doing something from a play I never sang for my father, okay. and I'm Gene. Okay. What is happening in this scene? In this scene, I am confronting my father. I've tried to please him my whole life. He uh, has been fairly abusive. I just want him to love me, and at this point, I've decided that I'm going to let him know how I really feel. Okay. okay, whenever you're ready. What do you want for gratitude? Nothing. Nothing would ever be enough. The orphan boy in you has resented everything that, he, that you have ever given me. I'm sorry as hell about your miserable childhood. When I was a kid and you would tell me those stories, I used to go up to my room at night and cry. But there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. When I'm up there and I'm auditioning, or an actor that I'm auditioning, we, we make a split-second decision. It has nothing to do with the script. It's what is picked up from the casting director and the cameras. Have you lost anybody recently in your life? Yes. Um, an uncle. An uncle. Mm -hmm. Were you extremely close? Yes. Okay. Well, sometimes I put in front of the actor something um, that has nothing to do with that script. Hold him back. With everything you've got, go towards Richard. Everything you've got. Everything, your whole body. Don't worry about that. This is where, this is where it is. What do you want? Everything, go to. after him, go after him, everything. Nothing, nothing would ever be enough. Your whole body. Don, your whole body has to go after him. Your whole body's acting as an instrument. Because I will tell you this, the casting director, you, you got a, you're a handsome guy. They want to see the whole thing. The whole instrument as, a, as an actor has to be moving forward. Only because so many times 
people give great monologues and the casting director looks down at their legs and they're like this. Like they're just acting up here. The whole, they want to know that the whole instrument is going where we told you. The whole instrument is going there. Everything you've got. Whenever you're ready. What do you want for gratitude? Nothing, nothing would ever be enough. You've resented everything that you ever gave me. Or has resented everything. I'm sorry as hell about your miserable childhood. You used to tell me the stories when I was a kid. I used to go up to my room at night and I would cry. But there's nothing I can do about it. And it does not excuse everything. I do respect you and I do admire you. I stand in awe of everything that you have accomplished. I would never be able to accomplish any of that. Okay. That was but great. It does not make oh, me love we're you. We're going to stop you down because that was actually great. Oh, thank no, you. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> you know, Okay. Who's next? Next we have Jonas. Jonas. Okay. Hello. Uh, what are you gonna be doing? Um, so I'm doing a uh, a scene playing a character named Voss from uh, actually a video game called Far Cry 3. Okay. Yeah, people have done that a lot in video games. All right. What I'd like you to do is what is happening here? Um, well, my interpretation is I'm speaking to a. Uh, like an ex-best friend who's done something pretty big to betray me. Um, I plan on killing him, but I want to kind of get everything out first. Okay. All right, well, let me try, and then I'll, I'll adjust. Okay. Sure. Did I, did I ever tell you what the, uh, the definition of insanity is? Well, insanity is when a person does the exact same thing and they do it over and over again, and they expect, they expect <laughs> to change. All right, I'm gonna stop you there, you're doing fine. Okay. There's been people in your life that have done you wrong. Yeah. Have there? Yeah, they're there. Let's take that and let's amplify that. Mm -hmm. um, where, you, where whatever they did, you amplify it a thousand times more. You never take your eyes off your And remember, there's a camera there. It was right there. And you know what made Leonardo DiCaprio? But you know what made him such a brilliant actor? He never blinks. When the camera's so close to him, even when he's dead, you know, the, the, when he died on the boat, mm -hmm. and he's going down. <laughs> didn't blink once. They they want to know that you are. So when you are so focused, you don't blink <laughs> because your mind is elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Be in that moment. Mm -hmm. Whatever he did, amplify it a hundred times more or a thousand times more to the point where just looking at him could kill him. Did I ever tell you what the... Uh, Play with those words. The definition. So what I'm saying is playing with the words. You can say the cat is black or the cat is black. That's what made Frank Sinatra such a great singer, because he sang everyone else's songs. But what made him great was his phraseology. Play with your phraseology. Did I ever tell you what the, uh, the definition of insanity is? Well, insanity is when a person does the same thing over and over again and they expect, they expect it to change. And let's work the scene only because you can, because the director told you to stand still. Work it. Play with it. They expect Around. This time, that Walk this around. time is going to turn out different. Uh, the, the first guy who tells me this, 
He's a, a village chief, picked him up outside of Kandahar. So this guy, this prick, I thought he was lying. I thought he was bullshitting me. So this piece of shit is nothing. What do I do? Bam. Stop, please. Let's go change something. In prison, there's the bitch. Excuse me. Let me tell you something. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. Stop being okay. said, treating him like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't raise your voice. Yeah. You know, and believe me, it plays well. So did I? Did I ever tell you? Get in his face. The, uh, the definition of insanity. Insanity is when a person does the, the same damn thing and they do it over and they do it over again and they expect that it's going to change. You know, they, they expect that this time, this time, this go around, things are going to turn out different. I don't know, this, this first guy who tells me this, he's a, a village chief, picked him up outside of Kandahar. And why are you doing that? You know, you're fixing his. You know, he tells me he's a village chief. I don't know, you know. I thought he was lying. I thought he was bull****. So, boom. I shot him. You see, the funny thing about this guy, this pompous prick, he, he was right. And so I, I go and I look, I, I look around and everywhere I look, I see these pricks, and they do the same thing. Let me give thing. you a stronger choice now. You're doing fine. The actor will make a stronger choice. Can for this and go. And so I look around, and everywhere I look, I see these <laughs> pricks, and they do the same thing over. Because who's to say bars aren't here, and he's in the cell behind you? And over again, and they expect, they expect shit to change. They, they expect that, that this time, things are gonna change. And so you know me, you know me, you know that I'm always one to break the chain. So I course correct. Hmm? I course correct and they, they come to me, they beg me. They say, no, no, please, God, why? <laughs> Next time, it's going to be different. I swear to God, it's, it's going to change. And, and I stare into them, and I, you know, I, I don't like the way that you're fucking looking at me. Do you think I'm lying to you? Do you think that I'm, that I'm bullshitting you? Uh, thank you. When I do something, it has purpose. Mm-hmm. See, you know, in schools, the biggest mistake they make in all acting institutions is they tell you to play the objective. The problem is they don't tell you how to play the objective. In life, we have purpose. You're being whatever the case may be. It's not like you're just packing up and leaving a New York City apartment. Do you know how long it takes to get a New York City apartment? You know, here's a picture of you and him on his first date. Here's a picture of the, the shirt you bought him. Here's a picture of H&M. It's got to tear your heart out, you're believing. You know what? And when you're talking to him, this, this is things in your life. Oh, I visited Teddy at St. Vincent's today. It, it's very depressing. He's lying there in bed out of it. Did, did you ever fall in love or want to be in love? Mm-hmm. I haven't slept for weeks. Every morning I examine my body for swellings, marks. I am terrified of every pimple and every rash, even though I've tested negative. If I cough, I think of Teddy. I wish he would die. He is dead. He might as well be. Why can't he die? All my activities are life and death. Keep up my blue cross, up my reps, eat my vegetables. Put stuff on the table. Give your stuff physical life. As you're doing your monologue, whatever the case it is, touching objects, because only you know where you bought them. You know where they're from. We're rolling. 
All right. He put that gun to his head because you, he walked into something you weren't supposed to see. And you could go, oh, you ruined my life. <laughs> so you know what? Fine. If that's what the director wants for the camera, fine. But I coach Emmy Award winners. Make it look real. Go ahead. Something told me it was over when I saw you and her talking. Something deep down in my soul said, cry girl. All right, there's also something which I do is called reverse seduction. You take the gun, keep it where it is. Tell me what you love him without being angry. How much you love him? I love you. No, no, but with the monologue. Without being angry. Something. The sweetest voice you could muster. How much you love him. Something told me it was over. You just happened to have a gun to his head. When I saw you and her talking, something deep down in my soul said, cry, girl. And all of a sudden, another gun appears on the set. It's, gosh, it's cops walking in with a gun to your head, and you're, you're, you're going to kill your husband. A little kind of pressure's on, isn't it? Go psycho, without yelling. I'd rather go blind, boy! You always got to be worried about the guy, the sound guy. Because you're going to end his life, and he's going to end your life. Two minutes ago, you would have never dreamed of the situation. Now it's come true. I'd rather go blind, boy. Because your life is going to be over, too, when you pull that trigger. Then see you walk away from me, child. Maybe you have a child or, or, or a loved one or, or mother or father. You're never going to see again. This is the stuff you bring to the table. You see? Where's the script? This is the subtext. I love you so much, and I don't want to see you leave me, baby. And most of all, I just don't want to be free. I was just, I was just sitting here thinking of your kiss and your warm embrace. When the reflection in the glass Take your that I hailed to my lips now, baby. Reveal these tears that are on my face. Okay, nice. <laughs> it, you could have swore it was Biff from Death of a Salesman. And the casting director, which was Amy Gossel, said, where is this from? It's so beautiful. It went, dumb and dumber. <laughs> it's not the monologue. It is what you do with it. it, can, it, it you could deliver it anyway. It's here. You know, it's, it's there. It's in your head. You can be anything, say anything, mold and sculpt your words. One by one, you know, with tomorrow, what are you going to do differently than you did today? When you go there and, and, and do something for your acting world, what are you going to do differently tomorrow than you did today? I'm going to, make my, I'm going to say my monologue while making coffee. I'm going to uh, just step into the character and know the background of the scene. Yeah, and there's questions I ask every day. I, I have a whole list of questions you ask your character. 50 to 100, and I'll say this, but you have to know everything about them, even the way they shit and, and sleep. Everything. I'm gonna bring something extra to the table. Yes. Something more, something unexpected. Now don't forget, they're watching you from the moment. They're not just watching you in front of them. Sometimes they're outside. You know, and some of the casting directors see you occasionally, don't they? Mm -hmm. Some of them. Every time you're in front of them, you have to have advanced to the next level do something, just don't go in the same person, 
you know, she or he knew you as three months ago. You know, last month you got called in for an under five, this time it's chief of staff. Go there with the experience of, of that you learned something. Hello, my name is Kimmy A. Workman, and um, I'm going to try and as well create something new and different that they haven't seen before. And also because I have a comedic piece, um, I'm going to try it in different ways, dramatic, and just try it and play around with it more. Hi, I'm going to remember that the computer uh, is, the camera is a computer, and that it's capturing everything I do. So I have to remember what it is I'm trying to accomplish, who's my character, what's my goal, how do I want my audience to feel, and how do I project my character, how do I become my character. Okay. Really quick, I learned a long time ago, like I used to be afraid of the camera. Do you put that camera on your kitchen table tonight? You know, and then you turn it, you don't have to be on, but you walk into that kitchen, just be conscious that there is a camera there. You'll pick up things and know how to act in front of a camera. And when you're by yourself, just know that there's a camera there. And you, you'll, you'll watch how that will translate cinematically in your work. I'm gonna work my monologue with props instead of pantomime. It's in the conscious level, so when I'm out there in the field, it's in the subconscious level. When I'm at the audition, I know I feel that peanut butter, I feel that gun and stuff. All right, lovely, thank you. Well, thank you to everyone here and thank you to the viewers at home. Today, what do we learn? Stronger, bolder choices. Right. Character through the character, ballistics. This man is full of a million tools you can utilize in your acting career. So thank you all for being here. And for everyone who didn't get to get up tonight, we hope that at least through observation, you could see the transformations in your colleagues that did get up here and really listen, pay attention to what John was saying in those techniques. So uh, there's a lot of uh, good information there that was there tonight. Thanks so much for being here. Be sure and check out John's website, johnpalata.com, for a lot more good information. And everybody, give yourselves and our participants and John Palata a round of applause. Good night, everybody. Bring something to the table.